In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a way that you can actually quit out of your game and be able to have that whenever you launch the game and publish it. Uh, this is a great way as far as if you need to publish the game as far as testing and you need some input to be able to control this. Now this video is going to specifically focus on if you have a keyboard and also as far as being able to make this as simple as possible for those of you that may not have a lot of experience with blueprints. One of the other elements you're going to need to be a little bit familiar with is the widget blueprint, which is what we use to create user interfaces in the Unreal Game Engine. All we're going to use this for is to make an interactive quit button so that instead of just quitting directly out of the game using a key, you actually have to go through the interface. This is actually a pretty good practice from the standpoint that you don't want your user whenever they're interacting with the game to accidentally bump a key and exit out of the game. The last thing I'm going to point out is we are going to be mapping these to a key on the keyboard. While you are testing, however, and if you want to test the interface and the quit capabilities while you are in the Unreal Engine, I would avoid mapping it to Escape, since Escape is the keyboard shortcut in Unreal that whenever we're play testing in our work environment, if I hit the Escape key, it kicks me out of the UI environment. So for testing purposes, I'm going to use a different key. All right, so one of the first things to do here is briefly talk to you all about as far as how you add this blueprint in. The first thing you do is you are going to create the widget, but then from the widget capabilities here, you are going to map as far as when the button is clicked, it's going to quit the game. Also as well, we got it then set up and attached to the third person avatar in the blueprint there as far as how to react when the key is pressed to call upon that widget UI. Just to demonstrate briefly here, I could technically actually come into the third player character and if I wanted to, from a testing purpose perspective, I wouldn't condone this as far as launching or packaging a game. I could actually come in and edit the blueprint for the third player character. And I could actually just come in. Uh, let's choose, let's see if I can use my Q key. There we go. So I begin to type Q key and I'm gonna use this for quit. And when it is pressed, notice the moment I hit Q, I actually have a quick game option. I could technically actually compile, save, save my map, and if I hit play on my map, I move around a little bit, if I hit the Q key, I snap out. So that's the importance of the third player character blueprint, is we're actually able to come in and attach the overall UI and also interactions with the game environment. So I'm actually going to come in, open the blueprint editor. I'm going to get rid of this quick game for right now. I'm not going to need this in here. I am, however, going to leave the Q key because I'm going to reuse that as my quit key. So now let's come back and let's talk about making that widget UI so that we can actually have a UI that the player can interact with and control. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click down in my content browser and user interface blueprints are called widget blueprints. So I'm going to go ahead and I will call this BP underscore quit game BTN. And let's go ahead and open this up by double clicking. Now again, I'm going to assume you're semi-familiar with a UI here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my button into my canvas. And then I'm also going to grab my text. And then let's go ahead. I'm actually going to increase the size. Pull that down. call this quick game and make it a little bit larger, but also to make it so that we can actually read the text. Great. All right. And then outside of that, um, I'll go ahead and center the widget so it scales proportionately, just keeps it down in the corner there. Now I'm going to keep the button highlighted and I'm going to scroll down here. As a reminder, um, you do have several events down here. I will briefly go into these for folks. Normally, I would encourage folks to use the on-clicked. This means that your user has actually pressed down on the mouse key 
or the mouse button and has released it. Some people you may hear, they'll talk about, you know, on pressed. Pressed is a little bit different. This is where if the user were to press and hold down the mouse button. The reason I favor on clicked is because with an on pressed call, maybe the user clicked on quit and they said, oh no, I didn't actually want to click that. And I'm sure we've all done that where we've clicked and held and kind of moved the cursor away from a button or a link. If we're using on pressed, that means then that we're actually still attaching this. So I'm going to go ahead and say on clicked. And in here is where I want the quit to occur. So when the button is clicked, quit the game. So we're going to save, compile, oops, save again there. All right, everything looks good. So now I'm actually ready. If you closed out, you'll want to reopen that third person character blueprint. And let's talk now about our Q key. So the Q key is actually going to call the widget and actually display it to the user. So when the Q key is pressed, I want it to create a widget. Now this is kind of simple here from the standpoint that we have to call the class of the widget. We only made one main widget here, the BP quit game BTN. So I'm going to attach it to that. And now you can just see up on the title bar here, just to draw your attention, it now changes and actually names the widget that we're calling, which is fine. And when we call that though, we also now need to tell it to add it to the viewport. We can also set, we're going to say our review, our return value is the target. So again, the return value is the third player character there. So let's check. Okay, great. So we can compile. I just want to show this little part for right now. So on the press of the Q key, create our widget and place it in the viewport for the user to see. So if I come in now and go ahead and hit play. So right now we don't see anything. I hit my Q key. Notice the quick game pops up. So that's kind of the first chunk here. However, we have some issues here. Number one, because of how the third player blueprints are set up in Unreal, notice whenever I'm moving around, I'm actually not seeing a mouse cursor. A little bit of a problem there. It's still latched on to the controls as far as the player is concerned. So we're going to go ahead and take this one step further. So I'm going to hit my escape key and let's come back into the third player character. So we're about halfway there, but what I want to say now is as far as the mouse cursor is concerned, when this uh, viewport is added, let's actually go one step further. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and set to show the mouse cursor to the user. And again, I turned off context, uh, context set sensitive. And there we go. So when we add this to the viewport, show my mouse cursor. And again, notice under here, Boolean value. So you want to set that to true. Now the target though, where are we getting the mouse cursor from? Again, remember you're building this in the third person character blueprint. So I am going to tell it to get to get the player controller. There we go. And we only have the one player in here, so we don't have to worry about the integer. But now let's compile again and save. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So again, moving around. Okay, there we go. At least I get the cursor. And when I click the quit button, voila. It actually goes back, it references, remember in that blueprint widget on the button, we set that on click to quit out of the game. So you have this nested daisy chain going on with your blueprints. So I'm going to go ahead and save that again. Lastly, one other thing I want to show you though for right now to get you started is when I play though, I do have one more hiccup is, okay, so you're running around, the player's ready to quit the game. If I hit the Q button a second time, notice I brought up the UI. I can't get rid of it now. Again, you got to map everything out for a player. 
So let's go back into that third person character. So we're almost there. So we kind of did the base test here where great, you know what, I have the interactivity, it's latching into that uh, quick game widget, good stuff. But what if I wanted to remove the widgets? Well, what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and actually find that. So I'm gonna tell it to remove all the widgets from the UI for right now. As you get more comfortable with widgets and working with UIs in Unreal, there are ways that you can target specific elements. Again, this video is just to help you get started as far as if you have to publish and test your game. And what we're going to do once again is we want to set the show mouse cursor. We're going to say the return value is the player controller. But this time, I'm going to leave this false because I actually don't want to show the mouse cursor. Remember, what we're doing here is we're latching on that when we turn off or press Q again, we want to remove all these widgets. And we also want to remove the mouse cursor again so the user goes back to just controlling the player. Now, the last thing here is, okay, well, let's say I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and release it we might think, okay, that's correct. Well, let's go ahead here. Let's take a look and see what happens here. So once again, I'm running around, good stuff. Uh-oh, see what happens? When it's released, all you're getting in the, is this flicker. This is often a mistake I'll see folks make as far as, oh, well, I'm almost there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just break the link to remove all widget. And then also the pressed, I'm gonna break the link to create widget. There is one more blueprint element that you can work with. It's actually kind of a short and sweet one here. It's called a flip-flop. The flip-flop, it alternates between A and B outputs and defaults to an A output. So when it is pressed, we wanna create the blueprint. However, when it's released, remove the widget. So let's give this one more try here. So we'll go ahead and play. Okay, so your player's running around. They hit the Q key. But let's say they change their minds. And now your player can go right back to playing. The only other thing I'd advise with this is once you're done testing and once you're ready to publish, just make sure to remember to go in as far as the third place player character. If you don't want the Q key or whichever key you choose for testing to be the quit key, this would be the time here when you're ready to publish, you'd want to actually come in and change the key choice here. Again, this would be a time where I would go and choose escape, and then I would move from there. 